our day The way of the crypt of warriors Can't rely on the bank There's no way Good morning, good morning, Big Square Road to With your morning horn of Z's Your sip of chaga coffee All right, I'm going to do something today that I usually don't do. Um, Talk about another, um, a friend of mine, David Morgan's latest um, discussions with this guy named John Perez about Bitcoin and the evils of Bitcoin and the problems with Bitcoin. And ultimately, both David and John are coming to the conclusion that Bitcoin bad. Um. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty detail. Uh, David put out a blog that basically summed everything up. But um, yes, there are bad people in Bitcoin. There's bad people in gold. Don't forget that, uh, guys. Um, But a lot of the things that John says, I mean, some are just ridiculous. Like, oh, if if power goes out, Bitcoin will be gone. Um, That is not true. I've heard that argument many years. If the Internet goes down, Bitcoin is gone. That is true, but we are gone as well. We are so dependent upon the internet for absolutely everything, including our nuclear power plants run off the internet, our gasoline, our power, everything is run off the internet now. Like it or not, we are totally and completely dependent upon the internet. Um, so if the internet goes down, we, I think the studies say 90% of the population would be dead in a couple months. Uh, so you can just throw that argument out right away. Um, secondly, if the internet went down or the power went down, um, no one would use gold as money or silver as money. You won't be using money in that scenario in the Mad Max world. You can even look at the movie. How many how many pieces of gold do you see uh, transacted in a Mad Max world? None, zero, nada. Um, gold and silver are a are both useful assets in their own way. Now, I am not anti-gold. I just think there's a hell of a lot more than people are telling you. I think there's 10 times as much gold as the powers that be tell you there is in the world. And I think they control the price for a reason. Silver, on the other hand, is absolutely necessary for a high-tech future. If they don't think we're headed into a high-tech future, I can see an argument for saying, okay, you know, no high-tech future, no internet, no, there'd be no silver is needed on the industrial side anyway. Um, but that, I mean, those are, those are silly discussions that I've had for the past 10 years. I, w- I thought the same way 10 years ago when I first started getting into cryptos. I didn't understand what Bitcoin was. Cliff High set me on, a, on, a, on the right path to understand that like gold and like silver, cryptos are standalone assets, standalone assets. And I'll get to that in one second. Um, and I'll go over the summary of what David said. Again, I'm not trying to crap on David. I'm, I'm trying to help gold and silver investors, to help them understand that you're going to have to have both. Gold and silver is important to have in your possession now because of the manipulation, because silver has been price suppressed for over 170 years. That's what you're in that game for and the absolute necessity of silver in the future. But... Gold and silver would not be used as money. They don't make a good form of money in the type of world we're moving into, which is a smarter, faster, high-tech world. And to dismiss Bitcoin and cryptos out of hand as if the whole world will go back to a gold standard or a silver standard is beyond naive. And I hope these guys take a moment to think about what are they? Why, why does Bix call Bitcoin a standalone asset? You know, when anybody tells me there's, there's no uh, intrinsic value in Bitcoin, well, there's no intrinsic value in anything, my friends. <laughs> if you're a, on a desert island and you have a choice between a bar of gold and a sandwich, which has more intrinsic value to you on your desert island, you're going to go for the sandwich every time. There's no intrinsic value in anything. There's value we assign to things. And right now, the biggest pro for gold and silver and cryptos is that they are standalone assets. You don't need a third party. And when anybody says, oh, Bitcoin's not backed by anything. Well, nothing's backed by it. Gold's not backed by anything either. 
What makes you, you? You pull it out of the ground. It's a physical thing. You can touch it. Really? I can touch my Bitcoin if I put it on a paper wallet. I'm touching it. It has more value than an ounce of gold in today's situation. That's what we're going to get into. What is today's situation? <clears throat> so this is uh, what David put out in his blog. And David is one of the smartest guys I know. But he, he, he struggles with cryptos. I did too. <clears throat> I go back to my old videos when I first found out about cryptos and I was just slaying cryptos. I thought, no, I know exactly. It's not backed by anything, blah, blah, blah. What happens if the internet, I've, I've gone through every single argument and you're going to you hear some of those arguments in what, what David put out. And it's kind of a, a summary. Now, I'm not saying that cryptos aren't going to go to zero. I think they will. I think they'll go negative before we have free markets. But I think silver will go negative as well. And if you don't think silver can go negative, look at the price of oil. It went to negative $40. And you may say, Pix, but that was on the derivative market. Yes, all exchanges are derivative markets today. Silver does not have any physical exchange. No, the LBMA is not an exchange. First of all, it's not, it's not even a market. It's an association where the banks tell each other how much they shift in paper uh, certificates. Over 130 million ounces is shifted every year, which is a billion, billion ounces, which is ridiculous. In all of history, what, 60 billion has been mined? And yet the bankers are allowed to tell you that they shift over 130 billion a year on the LBMA. Now, the way you get to that number is their published number, which I think is 30 or 40 billion. And then that's, but that's net. And as our friends at JP Morgan told us long ago, silver trades four or five times what the net trade is in physical, supposedly. That's what they tell us. Well, of course, we don't know. You're not allowed to know. But anyway, so here's what David put out. Bitcoin buyers beware. Questions to ask before investing. It has become abundantly clear that the U.S. dollar's reign is nearing an end. Although the bond market remains intact and small uh, changes in interest rates persist, the dollar is becoming less valuable every week, signaling that the currency crisis is accelerating. I agree with that. Um, although they control all those numbers, remember. Therefore, it is natural for people to seek alternatives to protect the purchasing power of their hard-earned money. Many are turning to precious metals like gold and silver, but the younger demographic of Gen Z, thank you, by the way, of Gen Z and millennials have put their trust in the cryptocurrency realm. <clears throat> yes, David, I would say yes. Um, the younger people are more involved with cryptos than older people. Older people have a hard time changing their biases. I had a hard time thinking, oh my God, how can I be a gold and silver investor and then invest in the same cryptocurrencies? Right? An electronic blip is what I used to call it. So is Bitcoin a safe invest investment? Presently, I am wary of cryptocurrencies for several reasons related to risk management. Now, most of these are absolutely correct, but you can apply them also to silver and gold. First, cryptocurrency exchanges remain largely unregulated. I could very easily argue that all exchanges are unregulated. And more powerfully, Knowing that cryptocurrency exchanges are unregulated, the regulated exchanges that we toil in every day is even 50 times worse as an investor because you have a false sense of confidence that the silver market is regulated and, and trading appropriately. Leaving nothing to protect users from the risk of securities disruptions that can render an exchange insolvent. I said that's especially two of uh, the comics. Comics default is is baked in the numbers already. So <clears throat> anyway, a cautionary tale is that of Tokyo-based crypto exchange, Mt. Gox, which once held title of the world's biggest Bitcoin exchange, which handled over 80% of all Bitcoin transactions at one point in 2014. Yes, I am an expert in Mt. Gox. How do I know that? Because I was, I still have one in the, in the bankruptcy. I have one Bitcoin in the bankruptcy. It has been devalued it is a testament 
to the criminality of our current system. That was until it was discovered that hackers <clears throat> had managed to steal a staggering equivalent of $460 million from the exchange and its users. That's actually not true. Um, it was not hackers. The Mt. Gox exchange was doing what every exchange, every, um, every exchange on, on, on the planet right now. And that was rehypothecating assets, trading things that weren't there. We can see that in the comics. We see it in the LBMA. We see it in the stock market, the bond market, the currency markets. That is true of every exchange. It was not a hack. That was a, a useful type of excuse. But the reality is every single crypto exchange trades massively more than they have because they make money on the volume. And their customers don't have one-to-one -one backing. And that, that includes Coinbase. So important to have your assets in your own possession when it comes to silver, gold, and cryptos. Anyway, up until recently, Mt. Gox hacks was considered the biggest crypto heist in history. But cyber attacks have not slowed down. The digital currencies are still vulnerable to digital theft. Yes, if they are left in an exchange. And nobody who has been in the crypto industry for more than, you know, for less, more than a year, keeps their cryptos in exchanges. Worst place to keep it. And, and that is he's absolutely correct. That has proven correct since day one. <clears throat> now here we get into the good stuff. <clears throat> Second, the loss of faith in Tether poses a risk to Bitcoin. That is true. Tether is a fraud. I have been, I have been documenting the Tether fraud for over five years. I got a cease and desist letter from one of the lawyers of one of the participants. Um, and it's not just Tether, by the way. It, it's many exchanges involved in that fraud. Um, and it, it will be pulled by the regulators and by the banksters uh, once again to slam the price down of Bitcoin. But we have been through that so many times. In 2017, 2018, Chris Giancarlo, the head of the CFTC, admitted that's what the U.S. government did to stop the price of Bitcoin from rising. He even said him, Steve Mnuchin, Donald Trump, uh, Jenny Yellen, and I think it was Steve Cohen, one of the Cohens, got together and decided to <clears throat> implement tools to tamp down, wherever he heard that in silver, the price of Bitcoin. So it's not just Bitcoin that has that problem. And they did it. <clears throat> they, they slammed the price of Bitcoin from 20000 down to 3000 But the key, and, and Cliff taught me this, the key to Bitcoin is, the beautiful thing about it, it's anti-fragile. Anti-fragile means every time it has a problem, it fixes the problem and is stronger because of it. So yes, Tether will implode the Bitcoin price and it will go down. And then it will be much stronger because of it and then it will go up and everybody who is out of the system, you won't be able to get it when it goes down. Everybody who's out of the cryptos are going to say, I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. They're going to sell and then voila, it's going to hit you know, $500,000 million per Bitcoin. And you can not believe me, but I've been through so many of them. Again, cryptos are anti-fragile. Every time they break, they're fixed better and stronger. So there you go. Second is loss of faith in Tether poses two, poses a risk to Bitcoin. Tether, also known as a USDT, uh, is the world's largest stablecoin, which remains unregulated. True. Caught in a seri serious scandal as of recently, allegations that Tether holds significant reserves of Evergrande corporate debt has caused even greater skept skepticism. <laughs> Hell, I'd be glad if they had Evergrande debt. <laughs> Why? Because I didn't think they had any. I didn't think they had any backing. I know they don't have any backing for a long time. These are, this is the crypto cabal. This is the deep state. This is the pedo state. We don't want to deal with them at all. Yes. The, the big leap that, that David takes is not true. And that's coming up. Tether also um, currently being audited by the SEC. The stablecoin giant is feeling the pressure to answer the question. If $69 billion worth of Tether are currently in circulation, where are the billions of dollars backing it stored? True. That, I mean, what they did is they took assets that the crypto cabal owned 
because they got in and kind of uh, stole Bitcoin and the Bitcoin core developers very early. And yes, the deep state is massively into cryptos. But they use those assets to back Tether to buy more. Asset rehabilitation, wherever you heard about that. Um, furthermore, Tether's user agreement states statement reveals that they accept no obligation to redeem a single USDT. That's because they don't have any. They don't have anything to redeem it for. And the optics to worsen, according to a recent article published by Jordan Atkins on popular cryptocurrency news platform CoinGeek, the New York Attorney General's investigation has confirmed that Tether was lying about its backing. Everybody in cryptos already knows that and has known it for a long, long time. This is not revelations. Still, Tether and its general counsel, Stuart Hogan, denied the outcome of the NYAG investigation, saying that the investigation made no negative findings whatsoever, that Tethers were not fully backed, nor were uh, ever issued without backing. Now, I, in my investigations, the, the people who control Tether, you know, most of them live down in uh, Costa Rica, or Puerto Rico. And um, they are they are guarded by um, Homeland Security. <laughs> That's how deep this goes. And I have people who, customers, Road to Ruta members, who've been there. And they're like, oh my God, all the, all the guards were Homeland Security. And the dogs had Homeland Security badges. And yeah. This lack of transparency is posing a major risk to the future of Bitcoin. I do not believe that at all. Now, the price of Bitcoin may fall when it's shut down as the price falls on Bitcoin every time a, a problem is found, exposed, and discovered, and ended. But after that, it's free sailing for Bitcoin again, which already doesn't... Well, now here's where David starts chiming in that I disagree with. This lack of transparency is posing a major risk to the future of Bitcoin Dash which already doesn't look too bright as it currently stands. I don't know where he got that. Um, cryptos are the future of our economic system. You can fight it all you want. Um, gold cannot serve that purpose. It's, it's a hunk of metal. I hate to tell you it's a hunk of metal, but it is a hunk of metal. It got its value from its beauty, its longevity, and its scarcity. And scarcity is a big problem when it comes to gold as I've proven many times. I'm not saying gold is not going to be valuable in the future. It is. Compared to the U.S. dollar, everything's going to be valuable compared to the U.S. dollar. But the usefulness of blockchain and cryptocurrencies should not be discounted at all. That is our future. And without it, we go back in time. If the U.S. bans cryptocurrencies, we go back in time. We will lose our standing as even a a, a potential powerhouse in the future. And we're not going to do that. It's clear from even Congress knows that. Reports have emerged suggesting that unbacked USDT is being printed in exchange for BTC, falsely inflating the Bitcoin price. That is true. And with Bitcoin and Ethereum commonly being purchased with Tether, a huge chunk of all transactions are connected to them, meaning a collapse in Tether will undeniably trigger the collapse in, of Bitcoin. I would say it's the other way around. The collapse of Bitcoin will trigger the collapse of everything because that's the way cryptos trade. Cryptos trade in pairs. So Bitcoin being the, the big daddy of them all will trade in pairs with everything else. So if Bitcoin goes down, you'll see all the cryptos go down together because they're traded in pairs. Very few crypto lovers have cash to trade. And no, Tether is not backed and it's not cash. It's a fraud. But that doesn't mean you throw out the baby with the bathwater. In other words, then this is where it gets really bad for David. Without a tethered fiat system, there is no Bitcoin. That is just flat out wrong. And Bitcoin is a technology that was invented by Satoshi Nakamoto. It didn't get taken over by the bad guys until months after it was invented. Without tether, it's exact opposite. Bitcoin will be free to realize its true value. The reason Bitcoin is priced so high is not because of Tether. That's how it's controlled and manipulated. And David knows, like everybody else, all it takes is one trade. It doesn't take a quadrillion Tether to make Bitcoin go to you know, 
$50,000. It takes one trade. If one Bitcoin trades for $50,000 and nobody else is willing to let go of their Bitcoin for anything less than $50,000, that's the price, the market value of all Bitcoin. That's the way valuation works in exchanges. If one ounce of silver trades for $50 and no one else is willing to sell anything below $50, that's the value. It doesn't mean that you know, every times every single silver price, silver ounce in the world was bought at $50. It's just the last trade. That's the way prices are quoted. It's just the last trade. And with a liquid market, yes, it makes it more believable. So, yeah, if Teller goes away, there might be an initial slam down in Bitcoin like we've seen like in 2017, 2018. But what happens after the tether crash? Tether's gone. The criminals are arrested. They're in jail. And all of a sudden you have Bitcoin, this amazing invention with all these other cryptocurrencies that are amazing inventions, not all of them, but a big chunk of them, amazing inventions that humanity needs to move forward. So this is a message to gold bugs who really haven't, after 10 years, still haven't got their hands around what the hell's going on with cryptocurrencies. Cryptos are your future, your kids' future. The Gen Zs and all that, those crazy kids that are out there doing that, they're not going to turn back to gold. There's no reason for them to do that. They've found something better. And yes, it will be volatile. And yes, when, when Tether's taken down, the banks will be ready for it. They're going to smash the price of cryptos down and then everybody will declare Bitcoin is dead. And that's when it rises from the ashes and hits an all-time high again because it's anti-fragile. Every time it crashes, the problem is fixed. When Tether goes down, that's a gigantic problem. That's the time to buy. But as we know from the exchanges, when the markets crash in these situations, you can't get your hands on any of it. Why? Because the exchanges and the bankers want to get their hands on it. So they are not. They shut down the exchanges. Oh, we're, we're down for maintenance. How many times have we heard that? So yes, David's right. The whole system's a fraud, but the underlying technology, Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies, are absolutely the most important assets going forward. All right. <clears throat> so he says, without a Tether Fiat system, there is no Bitcoin. That is not true. It is food for thought, especially when one considers that Bitcoin was meant to be an alternative to fiat. Absolutely. I don't think Bitcoin itself um, should be used in transactions. Litecoin is much better than that, faster and cheaper. Hell, you can use Theta for that, which is a completely different technology, doing a completely different thing with some of the biggest partners in the world. Anyway, uh, Wall Street caught on to cryptos. It's time to watch out. Sure, I agree with that. Fraud and corruption is rampant in our current system. And cryptos is no exception. Bringing on regulators is going to do nothing to fix that. You know, if it would fix it is Reggie Middleton's invention, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Take out Wall Street. You don't need them. They're leeches on the transaction. Anyway, I've always said that when the Wall Street crowd gets behind something, watch out. The Wall Street crowd can push an investment very high in a short amount of time. This is what happened with Bitcoin in 2021. What many investors do not know is the Wall Street crowd plays both sides, which means they pump up the investment and then short, bet on lower prices, and start the dump campaign for the same financial product. We've seen that over and over again. Problem there is uh, the, the shorting ability of cryptos is not as uh, built out. So it won't, would only last a tiny amount of time. Um, they would take Tether down with their shorts, but there's not enough shorts to make any serious money for these criminals. They want to get their hands on it. <laughs> right now, Wall Street's out of it. Remember that. Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Bel Belfort, stated his concerns about Tether in an interview on Coindesk a couple months ago. Absolutely. Calling it a scam. It is a scam. According to him, while he assumes that they are currently running a clean operation, they likely did some things early on that they regret. I doubt they're running a clean operation. I don't know anybody who runs a clean operations in the financial markets. The Department of Justice has a broad latitude of how to deal with these things. But I think they will would really give Tether a very serious black eye. The Tether, again, the people who run Tether need to be taken out as well. Not just Tether, 
Bitfinex needs to be taken out. I can give you a list of 20 cryptos that should be taken down. If you can, if they're, if they're centralized. And they will. You now, the bigger thing to watch out for, the U.S. government granted Reggie Middleton his patent. So all the DeFi cryptos, all of them, are subject to Reggie Middleton's patent. If you have a DeFi crypto, you're in for a world of hurt. And if Reggie's not out to destroy the, the world in, of cryptos, exactly the opposite. He's out to fix the problems that are going on right now. But he's not going to stand down. You can blame your government for that. The government took him out. And he's going to come back and, you know, the government will say, okay, we'll, we'll get Reggie Middleton his patent, and then that would destroy DeFi. But at the same time, the U.S. government has to contend with the patent that they just granted. The U.S. government and their, their flunkies, the banks that control the U.S. government. Anyway, there's a lot to think about. <clears throat> Final thoughts. What does the future of hold for Bitcoin? Bitcoin is not going to disappear. However, I believe the ability to use it will become drastically hampered in the coming years. If he's talking about in the United States, if we do that, we would destroy the future of the United States. The future economic engine of the United States is cryptocurrencies, is the blockchain. It's not gold, it's not silver, and it's not the U.S. dollar. And then David gets into the squirrely bits with no intrinsic value. Again, no intrinsic value. Nothing has intrinsic value. Number two, backed by nothing tangible. What's gold backed by? Uh, gold doesn't need to be backed. It's a tangible asset. Bitcoin doesn't need to be backed. It's a tangible asset. It's a standalone asset. And this is what I argued with Jim Sinclair when I discussed this with him years and years ago. And Jim got it. It's all about counterparty risk. Bitcoin is a standalone asset. You can hold your Bitcoin without any counterparties. And the vast majority of the world is going to see value in it. Just like it used to be that people saw a lot of value in gold. Now, gold has been shit on by the banking cabal for the last 50, 60 years. It is out of you know, the whole generation knows nothing about gold. They know more about cryptos, and it's their future. It's not ours. Us old people, <laughs> we can say go back to gold standard all we want or a silver standard all we want because that's all we knew back then. There was no other alternative. Now there is an alternative to that fiat money problem that we've been screaming about. With no intrinsic value, backed by nothing, just, just like gold, it's backed by nothing, the future is uncertain. True. My view is the <clears throat> minority. My view is in the minority and the value of Bitcoin is argued daily on the Internet. So consider hearing both sides. And that's why I'm doing this, to give you the other side, especially my friends, the gold bugs and silver bugs. I have both because they're great alternatives to what is worse, which is the U.S. dollar, fiat money and the power it has over our system. When compared to an asset like gold, which has been well-established store of value for a millennia, it becomes evident where someone's wealth should be stored. Now, remember, <laughs> value is in the eyes of the beholder. There's no intrinsic value in gold. If the vast majority of the people alive today know nothing about a gold standard, because we went off it in 71, are they going to go back to a gold standard? And by the way, if we went back to a gold standard, who has all the gold? The banks. Why would we walk right back into the arms of the, the people who destroyed the system that we currently have, abused the system? But if you're deep into crypto, here's a word of advice for you. It may be time to take your profits and stand aside. With proper risk management, you will be able to remain calm and happy because you understand the risk and have managed it properly. And ultimately, that will help you become a seasoned trader. Patience is a prudent move at this point. Here are the rest of my thoughts on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and more by Tuning into the Crypto Conspiracy Podcast at this link. That is the um, stuff with this guy, John Perez. And if you're Road to Ruta members, you've heard it all before about, um, about Tether and, and the people involved with Tether. <clears throat> but I do believe, I, I absolutely, if you're only in crypto, you're missing out. I think you're missing out on gold and silver because of the 150 years of price suppression is not going to end quietly. It's going to end in an explosion higher. So crypto people definitely, definitely should have a mix. Of, of, 
I think a balance. I'd like 50-50 between cryptos and precious metals. Now, if you look at gold and silver, it should be abundantly obvious that silver is more valuable more valuable than gold. I'll say it right now. And it's right now it's priced at 80 to 1. Because of the exchanges. Our regulated exchanges are, are absolutely criminal. And don't forget, the CFTC has zero commissioners when Don DeBerry's stump leaves. Rustin Benham will be the last guy standing and he's just an acting commissioner. So, something is happening there. Um, all in all, first of all, I love David. One of the smartest guys I've ever met. I, I learned a ton from him about silver over the years. And he's a good friend of mine. And I've offered to, to chat with his guy. And David said, yeah, yeah, at some point we'll do that. Um, but everybody on the road to Ruth saying, oh, my God, David Morgan says, get out of cryptos, get out of cryptos. Um, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I am sure that that's a horrible idea. But yes, cryptos can crash. Cryptos can go to negative, just like silver can go to negative. These exchanges are phony and false. The key is get it in your own possession and hodl through the crash. After the crash, I mean, after Tether is gone, what an amazing world it will be for cryptocurrencies. It'll go to the millions of dollars or the trillions of dollars per Bitcoin. Absolutely, as the U.S. dollar crashes. Right now, we're just dealing with a bunch of criminals just like on the comics. Just like on the, on the um, New York Stock Exchange. Just like on the bond market. And the criminals are going away, let me tell you. If you really, really want to solve the problem, invest in Veritasium and watch Reggie Middleton blow the criminal banksters and criminal regulators out of the water. We don't need regulators in, in Reggie's world. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions. It's the closest thing to barter that was invented and it's on the blockchain. Right now, he's on the Ethereum blockchain. Will it stay there? I don't know. I, I, my vote is go to, the, uh, go to the Theta blockchain. Same software, same coding, except it's massively faster and massively cheaper. Anyway, that's my take. Uh, I love David to death. Again, one of the smartest guys in silver. Telling, well, it's only, only gold and silver bugs who read this. Most likely, and only gold and silver bugs will follow the advice and stay out of cryptos. I think it's a huge mistake. I'm not saying they're not going to crash when Tether goes down. It will, briefly. But then what? I don't think you'll be able to pick up any Bitcoin when the crash happens of Tether. I think the bankers will, because that's the criminal game they play. Anyway, you want more, go to roadrunner.com. I'm working on our timeline. Um, great stuff on the private road. Uh, just posted Jenny Moonstone reading, a really good one on the uh, your mystical timeline for the global transition, and then also the Katy Perry Roar NFT. We we talk about the is it a buy, sell, or hold for riches in the future. Really good stuff. Go check it out. This is Bix. I'll talk to you guys later.